Now, when we deal with a make to stock, we basically start off with an initial inventory that we determine is what is required to maintain a product to a certain level of demand. Now, as we go on through time, inventory is drawn down through demand until we get to a place called a reorder point in which we trigger an order to be placed. When the order is placed, the, the product is continually drawn down through demand until we reach the point of T. Now, the point of T is when the, the inventory that is received suddenly arrives and we go back up to level Q. In this instance, T can be either at zero inventory or if we have safety stock involved, T might be at a point of zero plus our safety stocks. We usually don't like to go through our safety stocks unless we absolutely have to. In which case, if we do, we like to replenish the safety stock when we go back up to Q. Then, and then this cycle continues when we on to 2T and 3T and 4T as we have this continual drawdown of inventory. Obviously, this model assumes that we have constant demand. In the real world, we rarely have constant demand unless you have contracted orders. So your demand line will probably be much different than what you see here in reality. But, if, but this is a good model to show you how generally inventory levels work in relation to reorder points. We start off with an, an initial inventory. We work down to a point when we order new stock. We continually burn off product and now all of a sudden the, the inventory that we ordered suddenly appears and we go back up to Q. And this is where economic order quantity comes in. Economic order quantity or EOQ is a fixed order quantity model that determines the amount of an item to be purchased or manufactured at one time. Now this model basically assumes that we're going to maximize the efficiency through the minimizing of overall cost of inventory, which basically involves cost of acquiring and carrying inventory. Now, as, as the production rates approaches the consumption rates, this number tends to increase because basically what happens is the closer we get to these two numbers, you never ever have a stock because as you build something, you, you consume it. So here's the basic equation for EOQ. We have, D, which is the annual demand quantity, K, which is the ordering cost, and H is the holding cost. So the assumptions that we have is that the rate of demand is continuous and constant. All of the, all of the variables in this equation are linear, so we don't assume any variability with the numbers. There are equations that do take into consideration variability, but this is outside the scope of this class. There's, there's books and references on the internet that can show you this information. But for the most part, this simple equation basically show, assumes that the rate of demand is continuous and constant. It also assumes that total demand is known in advance. Later in the class, we're going to deal with forecasting and how we use probability to, to hedge our forecasts. But for the most part, we determine a demand and we use that within the COQ calculation. Ordering costs are also constant. Now in the real world, ordering costs fluctuates considerably, but for the EOQ to be used, we have to put in a single number. You can create an EOQ variable in which you may have four ordering costs, in which case you would break up the periods with, within those four different areas and then calculate each ordering cost separately. Once again, there are more complex equations for this, but that goes outside the, the scope of this class. We also assume that the unit price of inventory is constant. This is also different than in the real world, in which case, in many cases, the more you buy, the less the unit price is. We also assume that delivery time is constant. This is an Im implicit assumption because we don't put delivery time into the calculation, but when we have, for instance, the, the, the order cost, we have the cost per order and then we calculate how many orders in a year. We just assume that the delivery time is going to fit within that number of orders. The replacement of defective units is instantaneous. In the real world, you may have de defective products and then you send them off and you have to wait for the, the, for the new products to take its place. Well, in, in this model, we basically assume that defective units do not have an impact on our replenishment of our inventory. And generally, no safety stock is included in the general EOQ assumption. In theory, you just calculate your safety stock and add it to the EOQ. 
you could do that as well. But then once again, there are equations that takes a safety stock equation and combines it with the EOQ equation. It's very lengthy, but nonetheless, it, it is a very accurate formula for if you want to include safety stock into your EOQ assumptions. If you're interested in this, let me know in the class and I'll see if I can pull it up and go over it in some detail in the classroom as a sidebar. So let's look at an EOQ sample problem. We have a distributor that sells automobiles at a constant demand of 10,000 units per year. So this is the demand, basically how many units per year that we, we sell. Now in general, with EOQ, we normally deal with yearly numbers. Once again, you could break this up into quarterly or six months or whatever, but just realize that everything in your equation must use the same unit. So if you have demand at one year, you must have the, you know, the inventory costs per year, material costs per year and everything else. So each order costs the distributor $1,000 to order. So every time that an order is placed, the distributor has to pay $1,000 above everything else. The cost of each unit to purchase from the manufacturer is $250. So the distributor has to order products from a manufacturer to be able to provide to the retailer. Now the cost to hold a unit in the inventory is $25 per unit per year. Now this is the cost per unit to, to basically store it in inventory. Later on, we're gonna talk about average inventory per year. And if you remember from the previous inventory graph where we had this linear line that went all the way down from Q all the way down to T, we are going to basically take the total inventory and then divide it by two to provide us with the average inventory per year. Because basically if you take, for instance, 10,000 all the way down to one and you add them all up and divide it by two, it'll come out to 5,000. The material cost is $200 per unit. This is the cost per unit to build the car. Within the EOQ problem, we don't really use this, but we use this with total costs later on. So calculate EOQ and total annual costs. Here is the equation for EOQ. So we start off with the demand per year, which is 10,000, the ordering cost, which is 1,000, and then we, we multiply that by two, then we divide it by the holding costs, and then we take the square root of that. And if we do all of that, that gives us 894.43 units. And since we don't buy partial units, we always go up to the nearest unit. Now, for total annual costs, there are three things that you're going to have to calculate. You're going to have to order, calculate the annual material costs, you're going to calculate the ordering costs, and the annual holding costs. So the material costs is the annual demand times the material cost. Now, in this case, now this is where the textbook this can be a little bit confusing. So if you were to say that the material costs were, the, let's see what the previous one, if, if, the, if the material cost was $250, that's fine. Um, in some cases, you'll see a, a material cost and a cost of each unit to purchase. In theory, I'll take either one, but um, okay, so annual ordering costs. Now, annual ordering costs, Basically, we're going to take the annual demand divided by the order quantity. What that does, this calculates how many orders per year we're going to have to create. And then multiply that by the ordering cost. So in this case, we have the annual demand, which is 10,000 divided by 895. Then you multiply that one by 1,000, which gives us 11,173. Now, in this case, uh, 10,000 divided by 895 is 11 and some change. You could easily basically say that it's going to be 12 because we don't do partial orders. You can do that. And that's actually the best way to do it. So 10,000 divided by 895 would be 11 and some change. So we would say 12. So say 12 times 1,000 is 12,000. So if you put down 12,000, that's actually more accurate than I have here, but I would take both. But I would rather, I'd actually rather have the 12,000 than the 11,173 because we don't do partial orders, obviously. Then the annual holding costs. We take the average inventory. Once again, we basically calculate this by taking the quantity of demand per year and we divide it by two. And once again, what we do, if we take the average of the demand from 10,000 all the way down to one, that average, basically adding up all those numbers and dividing it by the, by the number of, of days. 
then you, it would come down to 5,000. So, so, okay, if we were just to add up all the demands during, for every day during the year, then divide by 365, you would get 5,000. So that's where the annual, the, that's where the average inventory comes from. And from that, we would multiply that by the holding cost. So 5,000 times 25 is $125,000. So when we calculate this, we would take 2 million plus the 11,173, which in this case, it would be 12,000. So 2 million plus 12,000 plus 125,000 equals 2 million 100 and it would be, it would be 12,000 instead. So it'd be 2 million 145,000 dollars, which is the total cost, total annual cost of inventory. And this is the cost to, to make the product or, or order it. Okay. So this is the, the material costs plus the ordering costs plus the holding costs. So it's the cost to obtain the inventory, the cost to order the inventory, and then the cost to hold the inventory before you sell it. The problem that's in your textbook is very similar to this. Once again, if you get caught up on material costs, vice, the cost of materials, as a distributor, the distributor doesn't manufacture stuff. So if I go back to here, if, if you were to basically use a cost of each unit to purchase from the manufacturer, if you use that as your unit cost, instead of the material cost, that is perfectly fine. Um, in theory, a distributor wouldn't really make things, so the material costs would be outside of their, their purview. So the cost of each unit to purchase from the manufacturer is what they're worried about. So they would pay $250 to purchase each item so that would be the one as a distributor that you would worry about most. If you are a manufacturer, then the material cost is where that would come into play. So the material cost would be $200 per unit. And then with that, you can calculate the profitability of their, of their orders by basically saying that the manufacturer, saying that, that the manufacturer pays $200 to make a unit and it sells a unit to the distributor for, for $250. So the profitability per unit is $50. And if you sell 10,000 units, then their profitability would be $500,000 a year. Then you would subtract various costs and add in costs to determine what the total profitability would be. We'll be looking at this later in the class when we deal with profitability from different levels. Just suffice this, remember this for now, that when we deal with costs to manufacturer, the material cost is what the manufacturer bears and the cost of purchase from manufacturers 200 is what the distributor takes on. So I hope this video helped you understand the problem. In, me, in most cases, the problems that I see are usually with understanding which numbers go into where. Sometimes the most common problem I see is the holding cost. They'll take the holding cost and divide it into the inventory. So this is the holding cost per unit that's very important to, to remember so don't divide it into your total demand try to follow the equation as close as possible and if you have any questions put a question in the discussion area of the classroom and i'll be more than happy to answer that for you so here are the re references once again i added one from last week the handbook of supply chain management it's an older publication but it still has a lot of very good details in regards to some of the more complex concepts. It goes in a lot more detail than the textbook does on various things. So if you can find this on sale on Amazon, I would recommend it. Although, as I said, it is a little bit outdated for some of, the, some, of the, some of the examples and it will not have some of the more recent strategies that have come out. So, um, but this is still very good for understanding the basic concepts such as EOQ, the safety stock, lead time, demand, and all that. I highly recommend that book if you can find it on sale somewhere. And the rest are also very good too. Well, so thank you very much for listening to this video. And please feel free to post any questions either in the YouTube channel or in the classroom. And I will answer them as soon as I get them. Thank you very much.